this is Mr. T with another tutorial in our unit on polynomial and quadratic functions and today's tutorial is about solving a quadratic equation using uh, completing the square. So before we get into our new technique let's review uh, solving a quadratic like this. Uh, in the previous unit we learned that if we have something squared equals a number we can solve by taking square roots so that we can take the square root of both sides of the equation and remember from the last unit when we take the square root of both sides we have to take both the positive and the negative square root so the square root of x minus 3 squared would just be x minus 3 and over here we've got plus or minus now we have to split this up into radical 3 over radical 8 and let's go ahead and simplify this using our rules for radicals so remember we can on the bottom a perfect square of 4 divides into 8 so we can break that up into radical 4 times radical 2 which gives us 2 radical 2 and remember we're not allowed to leave radicals in the bottom so we are going to rationalize this by multiplying like this and we get radical 6 over 2 times 2 I'm sorry that should be uh, just uh, 4 so now we had x minus 3 equals that so we solve for the x so we get x equals 3 plus or minus radical 6 over 4 so if we end up having something squared equals a number, it's fairly easy to solve. Now I picked one here that had a fraction and a complicated radical here to simplify. Uh, if this had been a nicer number, this would have been even, even, sorry, even easier. Before we get into our procedure, let's look at and understand some patterns. So let's take a couple binomials squared here and expand them out. So remember to expand that we are taking x plus 3 times x plus 3 and if we distribute we're going to get here x times x and x times 3 so we get x squared plus 3x and now we have to distribute the 3 and we get plus 3x plus 9 which is x squared plus 6x plus 9. If we did that down here, we would have x squared minus 6x plus 9. And if we expanded this out, we would have x squared plus bx plus, and then here we would have b over 2 squared. So I didn't show the foiling of these. You can do that for yourself. But what's important here is the relationship when we have, this is a, if we factored this trinomial we get two factors that are the same it's called a perfect square trinomial and there's a relationship here between the B and the C and we can see that relationship if I write the 9 since that's a perfect square if I write it as this down here we could write this as And what we can see in all three of these perfect square trinomials, the number here is half of this number, and this last term is that squared. So our last number here is half of the b and squared. So that's how we can make or create a perfect square trinomial. So we are going to be not looking for perfect square trinomials, but we're going to be creating them. So if we look at this pattern here, what number do I have to add here to make this be a perfect square trinomial? So I have to take half of this number, so half of 2 is 1, and square it. So 1 squared is 1. So here this was 1 squared. And if we factor it, we get x plus 1 squared. Here we take half of negative 12 would be negative 6 and we now we have to square that so we're going to be adding 36 here and it's going to factor into x plus negative 6 squared 
or we could write that as x minus 6 squared. And lastly, down here, we would take half of that, so that's 3 halves, and square it, so we would have here 9 fourths, and this would be x plus 3 halves squared. So again, this process here where we're adding a number to a trinomial, we are creating perfect square trinomials. We are trying to then, we can then factor them and have something which, similar to our very first problem, is easy to solve by taking square roots. So let's pull these couple concepts that we've introduced here together uh, to use it as a method for solving uh, quadratics. So we're going to solve this quadratic here, and we're going to solve it by completing the square. Uh, this one might be factorable, but we're going to use this method here, solving by completing the square. For this method, we want all the terms that have x's on one side of the equation and numbers on the other. So we're going to move this 12x to the other side by subtracting. So we have here 2x squared minus 12x equals 54. Now, in our pattern that we had for completing the square, our a value was always 1. So we are going to divide both sides of the equation every term by 2. Now, we would do this even if 2 did not divide evenly into these numbers. We might have to deal with fractions. So now we have x squared minus 6x, and we'll leave a little space, equals 27. Now, I left space because our third step here is going to be to do what we just did on the previous slide. We're going to complete the square. So we're going to add a number here that makes this be a perfect square trinomial. Now, since we have an equation here, whatever we add on the left side, we have to add the same number on the right to keep it balanced. Now, remember in our procedure, we take half of b and square it. So half of b would be negative 3. Negative 3 squared would be 9. So we're going to add 9 here and 9 here. Now we're going to factor this, and from our uh, previous notes here, we had that that's always going to factor into x plus b over 2. So here we're going to have x. Now b over 2 is negative 3, so minus 3 squared. So again, this is b. So what goes in the factor is half of b. What we added was half of b squared. Now, on the other side here, now we've got 27 plus 9 is 36. Now, this is like the very first problem we had, even easier than the first problem. We're going to solve by square rooting both sides. So, remember, we're going to square root this side. And over here, we're going to take positive, negative, that square root. So, square root of something squared just undoes the square. So, we get x minus 3 equals, and here we get plus or minus 6. And we're going to add 3 when we solve for x, so we get x equals 3 plus or minus 6, and we're going to want to then split that into two numbers. So we, our answers are 3 plus 6, which is 9, and 3 minus 6, which is negative 3. So those, that's our solution to our quadratic up here, and we use the completing the square technique. Let's look at... Uh, one last example here. Same process over here, just a new uh, quadratic. So again, our first step, we want to get x squared on one side. And our constants on the other side. So I added the 27. Now we're going to divide by negative 3. So now I have x squared minus 8x, and I'm going to leave myself from room for doing the completing the square. So here we are going to add, remember, we're going to take half of that number, which would be negative 4, and square it. Negative 4 squared is negative 4 times negative 4 is plus 16. This will always be positive. I have to add the same to both sides of the equation to keep it balanced. Now when we factor, What's going to go inside the factor is going to be half of b, so that's negative 4. 
Again, we could be using our factoring that we've used before, a pair of numbers that multiply to be positive 16 and add to be negative 8. So that would be negative 4 plus negative 4, and negative 4 times negative 4 gives us 16. But the shortcut here is always going to be that this number in here is going to be this number, b, and we're going to divide it by 2. This number we put here is going to be b over 2 squared, and we're going to put it on both sides of the equation. So now we add this, we get uh, 7. We square root both sides, and we have positive and negative square root of 7. Now, this we're going to leave radicals. We're not going to convert those to decimal, and we would try to simplify. But 7 does not divide by any uh, perfect square, so we're just going to leave it like that. And we're going to solve for x, so we get 4 plus or minus 7, radical 7. Now, I could split this up into two answers, x plus radical 7 and x minus radical 7, but we can't combine those, so we'll just leave these in this complex, I mean in this uh, compound form. So again, this method is completing the square, and it works for all quadratics, so no matter any quadratic we have, we could use that method. If we can factor something like we could in the previous problem, that might be quicker, but uh, in this case, we, this would not have been factorable, and this is a way that will always work. So good luck.